bone density of implant site is best diagnosed by which of the following? And the options are MRI, CBCT, OPG and IOPA. Now when we talk of the bone density for implant placement, uh, there are four categories according to MISH. So bone density is classified as D1, D2, D3 and D4. D1 being the most compact bone. Okay, so this is dense cortical bone. D2 is a porous cortical bone. So is D3. But the difference between D2 and D3 is that D2 has coarse trabeculae. and D3 has fine trabeculae. Whereas D4 is completely trabecular bone, fine trabeculae. Anterior mandible usually has D1 density of bone and uh, D2 and D3 are found in anterior and posterior mandible and maxilla and D4 is found in posterior maxilla. So the nature and the quality of the bone is going to determine the osseo integration and bone to implant contact percentage. So your osseo integration and the final success of the implant depends on the density of bone. Now the density of bone has to be assessed prior to the treatment planning because if the bone is very soft then the threads of the implant will cut through the bone very easily and will reduce the primary stability of the implant. Now what is the primary stability of the implant? It is the stability of the implant at the time of implant placement. So surgically when you place an implant into the bone site, into the osteotomy, it should engage into the bone. Now if it is a dense bone, the chances of it getting engaged is better compared to if it is a soft bone. So the geometry of the implant and the quality of the implant is also going to govern the success of the uh, final outcome, final restoration. Because the bone density is such an important characteristic, it has to be evaluated prior to planning, prior to placement in the treatment planning phase. So here is an example of uh, maxillary posterior edentulous area as you can see and you can see that the bone quality over here is of T2 to D3 variety that means it is not very compact and it is not very trabecular. It is a combination or mix of both. You can see fine trabecular bone in some places and you can see some cortical areas as well okay you can see these cortical areas and you can see the fine trabecular portion okay so this is a combination of d2 d3 bone this is another example of mandibular arch as you can see this is posterior mandible edentulous area there is good amount of d1 bone near the crest and then there is d2 bone near the apex so this is also a combination of d1 and d2 bone so the contrast on CBCT will give you an idea of what kind of bone density the patient has. Now coming back to the question, uh, which of the following would help you diagnose the kind of density? So MRI is more of a soft tissue uh, investigation, not very valid for bone finding. CBCT is something that is routinely used. So we can keep this on hold. OPG will give you an understanding of the bone density very vaguely. Because it's a two-dimensional image firstly and secondly the contrast will not give you a correct idea. Same applies for IOPA. IOPA will just give you a brief idea of a region but not the exact uh, relation of the density because the contrast may vary depending upon the fixing and developing of the IOPA film. So the best answer here would be to CBCT.